Hey everybody, welcome back. We are now at step two of the five steps to leaving a toxic environment, the Christian edition. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to quickly recap our five steps and then get right into this one. So our five steps are one, the realization, just being able to realize what is happening, what is going on in your experience, um, and all these different things and leaving out all back stories of, you know, all the emotional pulls you're tempted to feel and what have you just being able to objectively see things for what they are. Um, step two is being able to agree with the change. So once you see what you're seeing, um, and you're realizing this isn't right and thus something needs to change, we now say, all right, let me now take it from my mind to my body and, figure that out. Step three is visualization. So if this doesn't necessarily align with uh, what it is that you want for your life or, or what have you, then what does it actually look like, right? So you want to be able to paint that picture, get a, a sense of your destination. And step four is the game plan where you outline um, practicals for this. And then step five is simply implementing these things. So we are at step two, which is agreeing with change. And so, um, I'll get um, a little bit more personal with this just so that we can really bring this to life and then you can actually see um, how this might work for you if this is your circumstance. So um, in step one, we talked about just different signs and you know talking about the different tolls um, that these uh, cults and what spiritual abuse does to you. You know, if you happen to, whether you witness it or whether you were, you know, part of it. And so... Um, I made a joke in the previous video saying that like, you know, I was, I was a happy cult member. Like I, you know, I was very agreeable. I didn't really ruffle feathers. I just allowed people to teach me and I majority of the time just followed suit with whatever was happening. And so in hindsight, what I had to realize is that I was, despite all of that and just, you know, making the system work as best as I could, the thing is, is that I was, um, I'm a people pleaser, right? And so what I did not know is that subconsciously I was doing this in order to receive approval or acceptance, right? And the thing is, and here's where it's really, really tricky because we're talking about this in the context of a church. So when you are in a church and you're, you're in this sort of dynamic when you're called to serve or if you need to do anything within the construct of the church you believe okay it's it's from god like your whatever your leading authority is there in the in the organization they're going to make it seem like this is a god thing so you you kind of you got to do it right so that's really really um a tricky thing if you can really convince somebody that the things that you do um, and the reasons why you should do it is for God. So I'm over here thinking because I didn't previously detect that this would have been a cult, I'm thinking, okay, I've got to do X, Y, Z, um, not just for the sake of um, pleasing people and getting their approval and their praise, but I have to do it because God wants me to. And so it's different when you can when you take it from the approval from people versus approval from god you know what i mean so i was doing all this different stuff and um subconsciously i was under pressure and i didn't really realize how much pressure i was in because i didn't take time to stop and think about it so that's really what's core about the uh this coaching series is that really you'll find the answer if you just take one second just to sit down and process and think through things. So I was doing everything. I was in all the different ministries. Um, you know, I I did it because I, it, it's, it's in my nature as well, right? So it was to their benefit that I um, like to serve and that I'm a problem solver. So like, you know, I mean, so I was just like, okay, I've got gifts, I've got talents, I got to serve. It was also expected, right? You know, um, when when uh, I was getting more integrated into the system and I became a member, 
it was taught to me that if I had a talent or I had a gift, there was an expectation that that talent or gift would be used. So I was figuring out and, you know, God has very much blessed me to be a woman of a lot of talent, which is why I was everywhere, at, you know, all at once at, at one time, not to copy the movie title that just kind of <laughs> that just kind of happened but yeah I was just everywhere um and doing things and I was I was I was happy to because again I I you know I have faith so I'm just like oh yeah okay like I'm serving the Lord you know um but then there were these other things um that I had experienced personally which was just you know if I wasn't there at some something then you know someone can go ahead and say oh like Hey, miss you. Where were, have you been or whatever? And like, and again, I don't like to disappoint people. So I like knew I said, oh snap, they're going to find out I wasn't here for this, that, and whatever. So I was just like, so I, I did what I could. And then when I fell short in some way, in accordance to the standard, then I, you know, had, um, I had my reason ready again, not to say that these were, were lies or, or whatever, but you know, I understood as I mentioned in the first video, that no is not just a, is is not an acceptable answer. It needs to be followed with a because. So if you don't do something, or if you weren't at a, um, at a particular event, it needed to be like, oh yeah, no, I couldn't, or I didn't because dot dot dot. So my becauses were ready. Um, I think in times where if I didn't necessarily have a reason or or didn't think my reason was legitimate enough, I found a way to kind of like bob and weave through that. Um, but regardless, right? So nobody, and here's something that I also want um, to be known as well, is that though these places, though um, a system should never be able to run your life and these places are just like, just straight wicked and evil with the way that they treat people, you as the individual, you do have a responsibility in it as well. Um, and so the thing is, is that nobody should have been able to run me, but I allowed it to happen, right? So I'm not pardoning them. You know what I mean? Like I can't pardon a cult. That's, that's, it's evil. <laughs> Cults are just straight evil. Um, so I'm not pardoning the way that the, the system is run, but I should have had the guts, right? But I mean, but thank God I didn't. Eventually, you know, now I'm, 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 I'm talking to you from the outside now. But um, I do, I, th I think that that's something that I want to emphasize within these videos as well. Not to shame you, but to just, just to let you know you have power in this situation as well. And, you know, you, you can come out. You just have to make the decision, right? Um. So all these things were happening. I was conforming to it. I even went ahead and I taught people this. You know, I perpetuated the system by also teaching other young women about this as well. So that was um, that was kind of my experience, um, kind of merging together step one and two, where um, from my personal experience, it was that like I was, it was it was all more so psychological. Um, and there was that pressure and there was that my need for validation and um, yeah, I was able to be emotionally manipulated um, because of that. So realizing that none of those things are good and then outside of myself, also witnessing the other things that I mentioned, you know, I was witnessing how... Um, I was witnessing and or hearing stories about how um, someone was talked down to um, by a leader or, you know, that they they were told not to do something or whatever. You know, it, there was put it, there was this and that pushback um, that really only happened to me like once. Um, and I might talk about it in a, in a future video, but I'm not sh I'm not sure it, it all depends Um but yeah, so I, so a lot of what I noticed, yeah, a lot of what was the, the experience was what I noticed, but as it pertains to me directly, it was more of the, um, I just saw some of the rules and I, you know, felt the pressure to make sure that I did every last thing. And so I wasn't perfect, but I definitely put an effort in, which is why I believe that 
um, you know, everybody and their mama, for the most part, did like did like me and they they did um, accept that. Um, so but either way, no matter if I was chilling or I wasn't, I just realized that I shouldn't be able to be run like this. Um, nobody should. And so I just couldn't condone it. And I realized that if I really wanted to have um, freedom in my expression of faith, then, you know, this just wasn't it. And so um, I, I now have to say to myself, what am I going to do? So knowing that this is wrong is one thing, but then actually knowing that one, this is wrong. And two, because this is wrong, this now means that I have to do something. That is what um, I want you to be able to do. So this one's a little bit shorter. I think step three is really where it's going to, it's going to go down. I can feel it in my bones. It's going down on step three, but I want you to be able to think about that, right? Do not pardon do not pardon this stuff that happens to you. Do not pardon the the uh, the twisting of scripture thrown at you. Don't pardon the spiritual abuse. Don't pardon um, just these unreal rules. And the thing is, is too, is that when I began to have conversations prior to my leaving, I was able to even see from scripture that none of this was right. And there were a lot of people that agreed with me. So there's a lot of you um, who might be watching where you know, even if you don't like feel it within yourself that something's wrong, you know by scripture it ain't right. You know what I mean? But for some reason, you, you're, you're still there. You still stay. Um, and so I want y'all to think about that, you know, if you're in this particular uh, circumstance where you're you're stuck and still trying to figure out like, you know, what to do it you know it just you've got to agree if wrong is wrong um and you've got to agree with it um so but i just want to know i empathize with you um whoever it may be viewing and you know definitely reach out i hope that this all made sense if there are clarifying questions that you need um please do let me know a lot more is going to be uh revealed within step three that's when I'll really get into, like, because it's the visualizing stage, I'll really um, help you see it from my story um, more about, like, you know, how this all works and how it progresses. But this one was fairly short. And I just thank you for giving this your time. I hope this gave some clarity. I hope it gave some confirmation for some people that might be in, at a crossroads right now. And, um, yeah, if there are any questions at all, um, and you want to connect with me, please do. My um, information is going to be in the description. And um, my book, uh, Guide to Freedom, talks about these things. So, you know, that's also another resource. But if you just want to connect with me just to kind of speak through some things, um, I'm open to that as well. So I'll take, I'll take care and you take care too. <laughs> and I will see you on the next one. Bye.